Welcome, my beloved friends, back to Through the Bible with Brother David. We do appreciate all of you who uh, who listen in. Uh, some of my family listens, some of my friends, and various others uh, view from time to time. And I appreciate you doing that so much. It's a great blessing to serve the Lord and to walk through His Word. And I hope that it's a blessing to you as uh, as I do so with you. Well, my friends, we're back in the North Carolina, uh, South Carolina mountains this morning. Beautiful place here. We've been here uh, several times now, but it's just a very beautiful place here. Uh, you can hear a creek that runs down the mountain uh, this time of the year. Been some good rains. And you can hear that water running from right here where I sit. It's a very pleasant place to be. Uh, trees uh, and the leaves are all out, so we don't have the sun being upon us. So it's a very nice place to be right here on this roadside and we appreciate you joining in with us as i've said many times before i pray for the subscribers and viewers every saturday and uh, ask god's blessings upon you and if you have a special request send it through the uh, comment box if you'd like on through the bible or you can send that to my uh, email at d parker at, uh, 4825 at yahoo.com and i promise to pray for you never would I embarrass you and if it's personal you can just sum it up as that have a personal prayer request and I will know that there is something that you can't say uh, out in the public and that's just fine I understand I've had several of them myself and uh, but I know that the Lord is a prayer answering God that he's very gracious unto us and he helps us out so much so much he does for us along the way well my friends I uh I won't uh, uh, carry on the introduction any longer, but we'll get on into the word here in chapter 15 about the vine and the branches. Abide in me, verse 4, and I in you. As the, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. And uh, I'll go on into that in just a minute right here. But think about this, the vine that doesn't uh, abide in him can't bear fruit, can't bring fruit. The, uh, the branch that is not plugged, hooked, and it's not grown into the tree properly and cannot get the sap of the, of the, of the base of the tree uh, or the true vine, it cannot possibly live. It will die and it will fall to the ground that's what will happen and it will certainly bear no fruit and so it's a dead branch that the lord says he would remove he's the great husbandman and uh i've heard this applied different ways but notice right here as he talks about abide in me and i in you uh to abide in christ it's not us keeping ourselves saved that's not what he's talking about he's talking about fruit bearing right here uh, the whole context is about fruit bearing and being attached to the to the main vine. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. So it is with uh, fruit. To abide in Christ is on one hand to have no sin unjudged and unconfessed, no matter what it is, and, and no interest into which he is not brought. No life in which he cannot share. Uh, that's part of abiding in Christ. And on the other hand, uh, to abide in him is uh, allowing him to take all burdens to him, draws all wisdom and strength from him, and is unceasingly conscious of these things. Uh, we walk with him and talk with him. That's abiding in him and staying with him. Not to abide in him would be like to get up and not have prayer. To face the problem head on without going to him with it. To worship him without reading his word or to try to. Uh, to have sin unconfessed and unjudged in your life. That would be not abiding in him. You couldn't bring forth fruit if you were doing those things. Uh, you just couldn't do it. And so to abide in him implies all that it's our walk with him and thus we bring forth fruit if we do that and if we do not do that you're not going to bring forth fruit 
There's a lot of other things that we could all have done with our lives. Many of us have gone to church for many, many years. And uh, many of us have read our Bibles for many, many years. Many of us have literally prayed for many, many years and have labored in prayer. I studied the Word, not just read it, but studied the Word. And, uh, and various other things we have done as we have walked with the Lord and abiding in Him and allows us to produce fruit. We talk about Him before our families and for our children. And we, uh, we share with them our love for Him and our walk with Him by our words and by our examples. And uh, it brings forth fruit. We speak of Him as we can. Let's have opportunity from the Lord to so do. When we do, it brings forth fruit because we are abiding in Him. Now, you could uh, belong to Christ and not abide with Him and not walk with Him. I think you could. And you get astray from Him, you're not going to bring forth fruit. You'll not be the person that you ought to be. You get away from the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and to a life of sin. Uh, there is a sin to death, we're told in uh, 1 John. And that uh, we should not pray for that, but there is, but there is a sin to death. Uh, my friends, remember this. It is our responsibility to walk with Christ and to abide in Him. We're told right here to abide in Him. Thus our duty to do our part in our walk and our life for the Lord Jesus Christ. There is things for we to do. We're not keeping ourselves saved, but we're keeping our, our, uh, our fellowship with Him intact by abiding in Him. Uh, notice right here on verse 5, he goes deeper into this. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me you can do nothing. And so it is. We, we can't accomplish anything without him. You may be preaching without him, if you're a pastor or a preacher. Uh, you may be trying to witness without him, and you're not bringing forth fruit. Uh, but when you do that with him, it can bring forth fruit. And uh, we used to go out Saturday mornings and knock on doors and invite people to church. Did that for about 20 years. And, uh, and, uh, and I learned over the years as I did that, that we had to totally depend upon the Lord to bring forth fruit. That we and ourselves could not bring forth fruit. But as the Lord gave us opportunity, and that wasn't every door, not at all. Uh, a lot of doors people wouldn't answer, and I don't blame them. A lot of doors people come, be, be kind of ill to us and short with us, tell us to get on, and I understand that. But, but before the visit was over, it seemed like it always be one person to whom I felt this was the one the Lord would have us to deal with today or to speak a word to today. Whether they ever came to our church or not, I don't know. But to speak with them about their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and their love for Him and to share a word of encouragement and a way to connect with that person and the Lord, uh, it's bearing fruit. It's bearing fruit. We, the Lord, through us, through our words, perhaps help that individual and in their walk with Thee. I remember one uh, visit we made one Christmas uh, one Christmas, we had uh, I had uh, three boxes of candy with me. I was going to take them to the people we'd met before uh, uh, as a Christmas gift to encourage them in the walk with the Lord. Some of those people went not home that Saturday and went out and had the candy with us. But uh, we went out this Saturday. I had those three boxes of candy. I was going to give them away. We gave away two of them. And uh, the last person I intended to give it to was not at home. So I didn't think anything about it. just left it in the car. And uh, we went to one house, and this woman, she was actually brokenhearted and really down the dumps. And we stood at the door, and she told us about the, uh, the rough things that had befallen her in the last few days. And she, I mean, she wept. The woman just wept. And, uh, and so... Uh, we couldn't solve all those problems, of course, but we let her know we'd be praying for her, and we and we did, and certainly we did. Uh, as we was walking back to the car, the guy with me said, 
hey, you care if I give her that box of candy? I said, well, no, no, get that box of candy and give it to her. He ran on the car, grabbed the box of candy, and ran back to her door. I said, wait a minute, we got something here to give you. And you know, I cheered that person up. I know that it did. It just no doubt uh, cheered her up. Well, that's part of fruit bearing. That's part of fruit bearing. That which helped and encouraged that woman on that day. And I know that's, uh, and who knows, maybe her walk with the Lord has produced much fruit. Uh, but that's the way the Lord works in things. Verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear fruit, much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. What about that? Isn't that amazing that, uh, that we, as we walk with the Lord, He allows and uses us to produce fruit? It is totally amazing. I've heard testimonies before of uh, sinners who said on the job was this one guy who was a Christian man. So I never wanted to be like him. But he said, yeah, I admired him. The fruit that he bore, he said, I noticed that. And you can't help but to notice that. You drive down the road and you see a fruit tree. It's my thing's bearing fruit. I would like, I would like some of that. Uh, just a few minutes ago, my wife took a walk up the road and found a, a blackberry a briar. And she brought right here to this table about six or seven blackberries. And I ate them. Uh, that vine she noticed was bearing fruit. She wanted some and I wanted it. It was good. Uh, so it is with the Christian who bears fruit. Uh, people around us see that and notice that about us. And uh, they said, man, I like that. And uh, sometimes our fruit can produce other, others. Uh, the Lord uses those things. I remember when I was in the Boy Scouts, uh, I was growing up. Of course, I was just a sinful boy. I did nothing right. It's extremely rebellious and always trouble. And always into trouble, but and but we had in our troop uh, some guys that were really good guys, good Christian young men, and I remember them very well, and uh, uh, they behaved themselves and uh, lived right and lived clean, and I, I marveled at that. And after I got saved, I realized exactly what it was. Uh, but they were bearing fruit before me. I remember a couple of our scout masters uh, who were Christians loved the Lord and I remember their attitudes and their patience with me it was great and, uh, and I remember it much in life it was a great example to me then and now that I'm a Christian I look back and I'm, I remember a lot of the things they told me tried to teach me and uh, it's helped me in life it didn't seem to help then but the fruit that they bore produced many years down the road and so it is with fruit. There's different types of fruit. And uh, fruit isn't just uh, in itself so winning, but it's part of that. Uh, we're told uh, much about bearing fruit. Let's read some more verses right here before my time is gone. Uh, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And, uh, and that is a great joy, to walk with the Lord and to know Him. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Uh, beautiful words, beautifully said by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I've heard that read at soldiers' graveyards who've died in battle. So true, so fitting for the moment. So great it is. And, uh, but then a greater love to know that God so loved us that he gave himself for us upon the cross. Uh, that we can have life and have it eternally and more abundantly. Uh, so much should we love Him. So much the more should we love our brethren. So much the more should we love one the other. My friends, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, 
call upon him today while we have time. Sure.